Hey guys, Dan the Wolfman here. here. Thank you for checking out my videos. Go to thecombatsystem.com for all your mixed martial arts needs. And please subscribe to my YouTube page. Make sure to go to thecombatsystem.com and subscribe to my YouTube page. Me, and it was a good time. Thank you very much. Thank for you. Thank um, for helping me. Uh, make sure to subscribe to this guy's uh, channel, Dan the Wolfman. Uh, you respect the game, man. You know hey guys, the game. You know what you're talking to, about. Welcome uh, to uh, Rare Submissions yeah, highlight number nine. Well, thank you, sir. This one's going to be quite a bit different, uh, as you'll see, because I'm, I'm doing some interesting things using biomechanics. This is more like TMA, Sistema, uh, Aikido-ish flavoring, adding your grappling. I wanted people that are kind of my students around the world to get a sense of some of the other stuff that I do and basically to keep an open mind. You saw me using my bicep um, and some spring energy to defend uh, here doing Sambo. And guys, it's a very, very old key I had for over 20 years back when I started in Greece Jiu Jitsu. And uh, those sleeves eventually got torn off. I took it to Japan in case I used it for some pro wrestling entrances, which I actually have done. I'm strong in using body weight distribution. Um, I think we're going to be a few seconds behind on the time. I'm trying to get right, guys. The time is a little off. My apologies. And yeah, a lot of these guys are smaller, but I'm trying to show you some intrinsic stuff. This is just a period of my life. Over there, I'm using um, his head where there was a triangulation point. So a lot of my takedown defense kind of has that concept a lot about pyramids and triangulation points. So if you put your their head where they have no balance, there's a half of the Kodagishi and then I go around them because really Kodagishi, if it got noticed by Judge Sambo, wouldn't be allowed, I was told. Um, mount, uh, spin around knee bars, legs are crossed, so I go for the knee scissors there. So knee scissors, kind of a cap slicer variation, if you will. But really a knee scissors, Tetris knee scissors. So yes, guys, this will look a little different than what you're used to if you watch my other uh, previous eight submissions. Right there. But look at always about head control and stuff. And for people that really follow me and in some of my videos, look how I hip walk across the other side there. I do that a couple times in this video, actually. I did it once uh, in an earlier uh, videos as well where I talked about that. Now this is actually the Sambo instructor yeah, here. So I'm just trying to learn. You know, I've dabbled in Sambo and being a cook or a black belt, like I kind of know Sambo, but I don't really know, didn't really know rules. I never competed in Sambo. Um, you know, pure Sambo school is just really difficult to find unless you're in New York and in the U.S. So uh, here I'm trying to just break them down, wrestling, riding, breaking them down. And then you only have a very limited amount of time to keep moving and actually going for a submission on the ground. Which is up to the referee. And I'm taking too long here. I should have cut my elbow back there and just gone for the ink lock. Break, break. He stands us up. Try to lift him into the arm bar, which is what I did there. So that was me thinking kind of like long chain arm bar. That's not the Sambo instructor. Uh, no, this is a different guy. Obviously, same, same blue Kirka style action. Two on one elbow breaker there. That could have been included in my Steven Skull Keto ish video compilation I put together. So, a lot of this stuff is like rooting, uh, strong spine concepts, guys. I, I definitely talk about in my Steven Seagal-ish real uh, Keto vs. MMA BJJ Fighters video that highlights getting very popular. So you might want to check that out if some of this stuff interests you. See where I, I put his head and then Uchi botted him there and uh, kind of a Nelson or some kind of Nelson I put on him. And then I was looking to see if I could get the Udi Rami with the uh, legs there. Kind of an Osoto, but look how slippery the mats are. This is summer in Japan. Summer in Japan's humidity is crazy. So you see in some of my videos, quite, quite, quite a few times, you see me slipping and sliding around or going for arm bars. 
or like in a, a couple of the two on one uh, grappling videos when I did in Japan, you see me slipping and sliding out of the uh, Kurigishi or something like that. Uh, I don't know what I do here. Do I log roll? Yeah, log roll. Now, say Komi, if I held it long enough, I'm going to the arm bar, it looks like. Jigatami. Nada. Smell Eva. And I had him, but he just like doesn't want to tap because like like the coach kind of <laughs> giggly. And I've tried to put like the most gradual part here. And then tight lines always put it it's beyond the uh, breaking <laughs> action. <laughs> the breaking <laughs> power. <laughs> Uh, arm scissors here. I'm asking if that's legal across my legs. Because I'm kind of like a guard and you're not allowed to do some guard. It's not a guard. I'm thinking anything about that. Again, I'm not the assemble expert, though I dabbled in it back in 98. I did a couple, you know, a couple days seminar with Electric Charles. Later I visited a couple times in LA. You know, and uh, you know, trained with Gogar all the years. And, uh... Um, Wrestling, kind of, you can see, kind of see this as wrestling for Sambo or for Shooter, in a way. So, uh, uh, to his back. Now grab, now wrestling and riding and leg riding. Do that a lot to judo guys, judokas, and, and sambo guys. Sometimes they can stand up with you and they're just standing and walking like a zombie in your grips. You hit them with a single. Yeah. You know, get them in a pace where you're playing a game. If you're going to do a video where you're going to do a doggy, you're going to get them over to the other side. First of all, your arm scissors, put him in pain, he doesn't want to tap. I'm just, I'm just, I'm go for safety. And he hits me with a beautiful uh, sideways tokenagi called Mo Poi. But boy, that was pretty, so I included it. But you see, I still get on top. That's the thing with a lot of judo jokes. A lot of judo jokes. In reality, in a fight, you got to stick to that real quick guy in the ground without them rolling on top of you or getting you your back. Break up. So you see the judo stuff I do is more like Chimato or Chigari or Chigari. And see I go for a little no, 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 no. there. And uh, we say no, it's not allowed. I'm laughing because I showed it to them uh, earlier. And this guy's a total noob, but um, I'm just playing with like uh, biomechanics. A little back adjustment there, help him out a little bit. And you see this on my original, like, Aikido number two highlight. I got some interesting stuff in there, guys, which is more kind of the finer concepts. Not everyone's going to get this, guys. I know these guys are smaller. If you don't get it, hey, watch my other videos. You know, I got eight other ones before this. On number 10, I got some big guys going with the Korean top team, So feel free to, <laughs> to not get it if you don't get it. Until you're ready to do this. Yes. Uh, now to uh, out of there. And now my eyes are closed. You know, because I'm Batman, obviously. So head control there, worn them down, and then just using my knees about how you can just take someone out with your body weight if you focus it in the right areas. But what if he's an MMA fighter in the Jujutsu Black Belt? Well, not everyone is. And I have to worry about multiple opponents and weapons. I've bounced and done security work off and on my whole life. 
I've been in multiple opponents' fights and weapons fights and spots in different situations. So, if you're mocking his spine in a weird jack in the box kind of way on his hips, and I just pushed him down a little bit further, and I knew he would tap out of his spine and mostly the, the, the hip pressure there. And I'm letting him kind of move around and have fun and get behind me. Even though I can actually hear, you know, hear him going around. But I'm really keeping my eyes closed all the way, so twice I open a crack just to make sure he's safe when I tap him out with, with that weird thing and something I'll up a little later. And so, uh, I kind of smacked his ribs there and arm barred him on my hip. I opened my eyes for the second time. I opened him for like a second after the weird hip lock. And that crack kicked down me. This is sensitivity, guys. And this is like, even, even, even really great grapplers and a lot of them are hit, and that's kind of losing some uh, of the self-defense roots to jujitsu, um, in my opinion. You gotta know the standing stuff. You gotta have the sensitivity. You gotta be able to lock a guy. Look at I'm tap. I'm, guys, I'm not letting go because I'm kind of doing certain things here. Like that's more like a like root. I can change your style there and make it tap out 100 times uh, while you gradually increase pressure or move their body. And see me walk away there, guys. That's a good habit. My eyes are closed. That's a four multiple opponents. That's four streets. So the guy can't double yes. sweep you with his feet or grab an ankle or, or uh, like a dog humping your leg hold you while your guy walks up with a baseball bat or, or bottle or whatever and cracks your head open. I've had, you know, real two-on-one stick attack uh, stuff I've dealt with. Stuff of that nature, guys. So, yeah. Look at my joint independence there and the way I'm moving my elbow and the way I'm moving my chest. Some system of fluidity. Can I show what I could have hit him there? Take it off, take it off. He's actually doing a pretty good job of, of defending his wrist. I lock his hips, so I just bear hug and just lock. And I just sink his head. And people don't understand that even yeah. some of these take ones do. Well, that's not a technique. That's just because yeah. they're big. Well, no. I just simply locked his spine. Oh, I stretched his arm out with my head. See a lot of that in my uh, Real Street Jiu-Jitsu Combatives video. minutes I put together, guys, if you're interested in self-defense, watch that. I basically give no, I a lot of stuff in there. That's you can hit me too. Bye. You know, no fist. Really good. No, I'm saying, hey, we can hit each other just, in the body. If you want, you can punch. Like, you can... Oh. I go not to her, but sometimes I... Sometimes and then I go back to yeah. my eyes closed, I think. So you can hit me and wrestle. Little D-pet and he flies off screen. I don't care, yeah. I'm barely <laughs> using any of my power. Yeah. D-pets are real. Yeah. I have to send where you are. I can't, I'm not, I'm not looking. Freaking really not looking. It. They, are, they have no self-knowledge. You know, and unfortunately, has made everyone think they're a freaking expert. Whether they've not trained at all or they're a blue belt that's done we tie for a few months. Come on, people. Take me down. You're mostly taking me down. And he got away from it. But he a little slap to his stomach. He doesn't want to play anymore. And yes, I'm bigger. And yes, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, I'm trying to show the concept of being uh, adapting as well as I want to have some fun because I know. I only had a beginner to play with, so at the end of class, I'm trying to teach you more more stuff, more crap like stuff. And look how I move my hips, and I move them when my eyes are closed, and I flip them inside. I use body awareness to figure out what it is. And this is with eyes closed, my hands is Achilles, and a little bit of downward pressure. I know it would flexate the Achilles and the foot, making it an ankle lock. Basically, it was an Achilles, it was an ankle lock with my foot, with my eyes closed. Uh, uh, uh. Turning around and showing how you know, even if you threaten people with risk attacks, um, you know, get people out of position. And that's the whole point is let the other person fall out of position and keep yourself in good position. And basically any martial art or fighting. Uh, uh. Even in gun battles, be in cover, the other guy's in open. <laughs> like, be in position. In a military conflict, be in position, be of strength. And if your spine is strong, you have good balance, you have good breathing, you are in a position of strength. 
and then he goes for his takedown. Ah. It's not always offensive, guys. A lot of what I do, yeah, I don't do a lot of a lot of them are counter takedowns and things of that nature. Um, yeah. Even when I go against good judo people and, and whatnot, I've gone against some Olympians. Um, it's very successful because they are putting themselves out of position in a moment in time, which usually if you were static and mo see how I hit his, his kidney there, that turned him and my eyes are closed and I do a double wrap like a key lock on his arm. Go 45 degrees. I was teaching him a concept. A concept of this is the first time you're getting it. 45 degrees is awfully powerful. So many throws, so many locks, so many, so much of taking the head over the feet, everything. 45 is a very important number. And mathematics, and martial arts, in biomechanics. Hopefully that was somewhat interesting, guys. Geometry, structure um, building. You know, just to sense the, the different things. And you can see I can, I got a couple elbow locks and stepping on his, uh, I think, calf and sh sh stretch his ankle enough to make him tap at the end there. Stuff like that without looking. And so, here. But mostly sensitivity just awareness. Keto in Japan, which I've understanding the body where it is. And it is good for him, too. times in my life. So, Yes, for I Watch, he starts to come real, and I get some real energy, and I stir his joint in his shoulder. So I'm actually doing the keto better than the keto body. So if you actually watch this, a second ago, what I was kind of doing, they don't even get that concept. And what I'm doing is stirring his shoulder joint for the takedown, putting some circular rotation in it, and, and stuff of that nature. I think this is the Tomiki Aikido people that compete, but certainly I didn't see them doing any competitions here with their twice a class Japanese business people type, you know, class. So put them to Trump. Uh, and, you know, learning this control for any grappler is of utmost importance to self defense. I can pin someone face down there, or if they're face up, do a double knee ride on their neck and face control the situation, if they had a weapon or, or whatever, they, so you can control the drunk uncle or you can get the cops, wait for the cops to come, that's stuff you need to know, this is grappling. And that's kind of why I included it here, is so people would maybe be a little more open-minded, and I'm not saying Aikido, oh my god, it's the greatest person in the world. I'm not, I'm saying that there's certain techniques, getting behind the elbow, two on one elbow breakers, Kodagishi, Nikyo, they're little bit of Sankyo and other stuff there's um, there's there's some techniques and controls that that's jujitsu it's all jujitsu man like you need to um, understand it and a lot of what I'm doing here basically if you look at Sistema and catch wrestling that's really where you get biomechanics from and if you open your mind to things like that it should make any of your martial arts better. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm Dan the Wolfman. There will be another one eventually. I got 10 coming up, and then maybe I'll do my sparring the 30 fighters. I don't know if I should narrate that or not. Let me know if you guys like this. Please comment. Please subscribe. Please thumbs up, and I'll catch you on the flip side. Thanks. Oh, I